Hello and welcome to The Future Real Estate. I'm Brent Ellis with the Ellis team at Keller Williams. And today we're gonna to talk about inflation, recession, and real estate. And the reason that's our topic for today is because we've been getting questions from buyers about this. So let's look, about, look at home prices versus inflation. And I found a nice graph going back to the year 2000. And since the year 2000, real estate prices have beat inflation the entire time. So it appears that real estate is a good hedge against inflation. And I found another piece of information on the internet that looked at home prices versus inflation from 1967 to 1922. And what they found was the average inflation rate uh, was 4.18% for prices. And that's pretty much falls in line. We tell people around 4% is the average appreciation of homes and the average overall inflation rate was 3.98%. So inevitably, since going all the way back to 1967 and through all the ups and downs, you're still better off in housing than you are in inflation. Now, let's look at real estate in a recession because some people think we might be in a recession right now. Others think we may be entering one into this year or into next year. Some say mild, some say severe. I don't think anyone knows, but in almost all cases, you're better off owning real estate, the home price change has done well, uh, except for the 2008 period. Now, what was different about 2008 was this. We had an oversupply of housing. We had a credit issue where lenders were just lending money willy-nilly and anybody could buy one and they were flipping it to the next person and we didn't have the end users in mind. Let's contrast that with today. So I, I went back and I found the the closest graph I could find was 2010. I believe our inventory was up around 16,000 uh, back in 2008, but I've got a graph that I found, and look at this graph, it's kind of funny because uh, if you look at the top right corner, it's back when we were with, at Remax, and we moved from Remax to Keller Williams in 2016. But anyway, it showed listing inventory between 12 and 13,000. And let's look at inventory today. Inventories. This is second graph is from 2016 till March of 2022, and inventory has been well below 2,000. So we don't have the inventory. We actually we've, we underbuilt all those years. So we've basically had an undersupply of homes. We also don't have a credit crisis. A lot of the buyers the last two years have paid cash. They've been the winning bidders. So I don't see a housing crunch coming to our market or any market really across the United States, even if we were to have a slight price correction. We did a video a few weeks ago you might want to check out on our YouTube channel about are you better off buying now when rates are going up versus if prices stay the same, go up, or even if they came down 5 or 10%. And even if prices were to come down 10%, you are still better off buying now and saving. So you might want to check out that. I'll try to put a link to that in this video so you have it. Uh, if not, check out our YouTube channel. And I hope this helps cover. Now, one thing I learned in finance many years ago is you're anytime in inflationary periods, you're better off owning intangible or tangible assets, things you can touch like real estate, gold, silver. And the reason of that is because the U.S. dollar is being depreciated. So let's talk real quickly about what causes inflation and if we're going to get out of it anytime soon. Don't listen to the politicians. Putin did not cause this inflation. We had this inflation well before he invaded Russia. And if the war ends tomorrow, this inflation is not going away tomorrow. It's, we're going to all, this is our inflation. It's not Putin's inflation. How we got into it? The two biggest driving factors were we printed too much money. We just spent too much money and we have too few, you know, too few goods and services chasing too many dollars. So we infused dollars into the economy and uh, those dollars are chasing too, too few goods and services. And secondly, fuel. You know, our fuel costs have basically doubled. And that petroleum is in everything. I mean, it's in a lot of the products you buy. It's in roofing materials. Uh, and it's also the transportation of the cars and trucks and, and all of that. So those two things aren't going to be abating anytime soon. The Fed's doing what they can. They are, re are raising interest rates to slow this economy down in hopes of abating inflation. But it's going to take time, it's going to take effort, and inflation's here to stay. So the real question is, what do we do with our money? Well, stocks have been 
a pretty good indicator of, of where you know you can put money in stocks but uh, the stock market has it's done well over time as well but here's the thing the stock market is down probably 40 to 50 percent this year and the stock market does not do well in recession so when the Fed raises rates when the bond market raises rates that's not where stocks thrive what thrives is pretty much real estate except for that one year in 2008 uh, in a brief one other time but by and large real estate those those tangible assets are where the winning money goes and that might be something you want to think about talk to whoever you advises you about money but I just hope this helps you understand kind of what we're seeing and how history has gone and where, where money goes from there. So you've been watching The Future of Real Estate presented by the Ellis team at Keller Williams. Our phone number, if you want to talk to our, one of our buyer agents, is 239-489-4042. If you've got a home to sell, 239-310-6500. Uh, you can find out your home's value at swflhomevalues.com. And if you want to search the MLS like a pro, go to leecountyonline.com. And I hope this was informative. If you're selling or you're buying or moving right away